Okay, let me tell you this one. Um, this is probably one of my favourites because um, wasn't too scary. Let me tell you this on the last one. Um, I got so trapped. Um, so I used to go fishing a lot trout fishing on the river and when I was crazy about fishing I was doing it all the time I used to do a lot of cross fishing in the area I was always rather than s stay in the house I'd go fishing um, I was a very lonely kid at that point anyway I'll go into that later So, if you're a fisherman, you know that the best times to go fishing are dawn and evening time. Um, and on this occasion, I did go in the morning a lot, but never saw anything. There was never any activity in the mornings. Quite often at the crack of dawn as well. Um, but in the evening, I started to fish um, this particular spot um, and there was a lot of other children there, well a few other children started fishing it and it was the point right next to where they where they ate and where they, I think they slept um, so the fishing was good there I suspect because of the leftovers on the leftover meals that were thrown into the water. Um, so I was fishing away one evening um, and there were two or three other lads there all fishing away. No one was really talking because I didn't know these lads. I think they were probably from the other side of the river. I don't actually know. Um, and it started to go dark and they all cleared off. Um, and I was left on my own. And I thought, should I go as well? But I thought, no, I'll, I'll fish a bit longer. And I saw a figure walk behind me. And I thought it was strange because if he was walking along the river, there was like a bit of a, it wasn't really a pathway, but the grass was short because of the traffic. Um, close to the bank. <coughs> so this figure was walking, say, 30 feet away from the bank and it was a figure all dark and I was used to seeing all dark figures um, you never knew some you know you'd have people with uh, dark clothing there was always gamekeepers and poachers knocking about and just uh, I don't know, scruffy people. Um, so you kind of hoped it was one of them. But it wasn't this time. So this figure was about six foot. So I think it must have been the, the young female. And the thing that was strange was because she was walking through long grass, there was no sound from her feet. If you had shoes on or boots, you would have heard the lashing of the seed heads against your shoes. But there was no sound as it walked. And I watched it walk behind me from 
if I was facing forwards from right to left or downstream. Um, and I didn't think much of it, you know, I just, I didn't even recognise that it was her, I didn't know what it was, it could have just been a, a person, a grown up, out for a walk, so I didn't bother about it, I carried on fishing. And it's getting darker and darker and it's nearly, nearly fully dark. Um, and I'm struggling to see. Oh, well, obviously when you're fishing you need to see where your line's going. And so it gets quite difficult at night. Um, and when I'm fishing I looked to my right and I presumed one of these kids had returned because it was sat on the bank um, knees under its chin about, what would it be, about 15 feet maybe 10 feet 12 feet from me, sat on the bank, in other words, a rod length away, and that's relevant. Um, and then I was, as I fished for a bit longer, about five minutes after that, it moved, it went from my right to my left, and that was because. Um, if you if you go fishing on a river, you tend to fish downstream. Um, so if you're bringing in a fish, you tend to bring it in from downstream, from where you're positioned on the bank. So it, it figured that out and it moved to the other side of me. Again, about 12 feet away. Um, same position, right on the edge of the bank with its legs tucked up, just kind of sat there, they call it sat on your haunches, something like that. Um, so I'm fishing away, anyway I catch a trout and I'm bringing it in. Um, can't remember what size it was, they're all about half a poundish. Well, that's probably a big one. Um, so I'm reeling it in, and next thing I know, this person, this figure, is in the water, in the shallows at the side, grasping for the fish. And I just thought, oh, that's okay. He's keen to, to land the fish. Um, and I waited a couple of seconds and the line went for slack. And the figure had turned and was wading back to the bank. gets back on the bank and I could see it was wringing its hands not wringing but getting hold of its the forearm and was running one hand down to get rid of water or slime or both and it did that on both hands but repeatedly you know, to get rid of the water and the slime off its hands and its arms. Um, and I'm still thinking it's a kid, a local kid. So I said, what just happened? Or something like that. I was annoyed that the fish had gone. Um, and no answer. Um, 
But the problem was the hook was gone. The reel did. Check the line. The hook was gone. The line's been broke. So it broke the line. And presumably nicked it. Well, it's still got a hook in it. Um, but at the time I didn't know that. I didn't figure it out. I only figured it out about now, recently. Um, so, it probably would have digested the hook. Its stomach acid is, is strong enough. It wouldn't have caused it any trouble, I don't think, because the hook would have been inside the fish, and the fish would have been inside the... would have been inside her. And the hook would have dissolved. I would imagine. It wouldn't cause her any trouble. Um, so it was dark at this point, so I thought, I'm not tying another hook on. Um, and I was feeling uncomfortable, because I'd spoke to this figure a few times and that was the last time no not the last time I spoke to it I spoke to it before that because we were sat there for a good while and I was asking asking it questions because I thought it was strange that a young kid I mean I didn't associate it with the six foot figure that would walk behind me what 20 minutes earlier I thought this was a kid that had returned because I remember I was fishing with, with some young, young, young children or the world lads I think um, so I thought one of them had returned so I was asking it where it lived um, and there was no reply um, so I repeated it and it gave, like, a response, but it wasn't an intelligible response. It was a, just a sound, like, uh, I don't know exactly. But it was like mimicking speech. Um, and I, what else did I ask it? I spoke a couple of times to it, and there was nothing. So I thought it could have been someone deaf. I thought it could have been a deaf kid. And he couldn't actually speak. Um, and then at the end, once the hook had gone, I thought, I can't tie a hook on in the, in the dark, and it was time to go anyway. So I thought, I'm going home. Um, and then I was, as I was packing up, I thought, God, I'm going to have to leave this young kid on the bank. On its own. I don't know where it lives. Um, so I thought, oh, God, I'm a kid myself, and I was only 15, I think, at that time. So I packed up, and I said, uh, I told it, I said, right, I'm going home now. Um, What else did I say? I can't remember. And there was no response from it. Um, so I walked off down the bank. And after about 20, 30 feet, I looked round and there was no sign of it. I couldn't see anything, but it was dark. And that was it. I walked home. Um, I got home and I remember thinking, who was that? I probably knew in the back of my mind. In my subconscious I probably knew exactly what it was, but um, as usual there was a strong denial. I couldn't admit it to myself a lot of the time. I didn't want to admit it. It was shocking when you came 
close to them. It wasn't nice. Um, but I didn't, we couldn't blame them. I mean, in a way I felt sorry for them. When I did kind of put things together a bit. Later on, when I was, say, 17, 18, I started to realise a little bit about them. And I had less denial, I suppose. Um, because I remember actively uh, looking for them later on when I was a teenager. Um, I would call it hiking. I would go all over the place. Um, and it would start as a hike and it would turn into a stalk. I'd be creeping along, trying not to make a noise because I knew the next. Round the corner was a, a possible uh, congregation point. I managed to find them a couple of times, but it was very difficult. And I know these these people that do it professionally say so it's like uh, following a ghost. It is. That's exactly what it's like. Um, and after a while, I started to to think, well, maybe I have made it all up. Maybe there is nothing I can find. Um, so I'll tell you about some of the times when I did see them. And they're the more interesting ones because the ones when I was younger like the fishing incident and the football incident and the, all the other times. They could have been uh, understood as just people that were living in the wild. But the later ones when I see them um, on their travels, um, when they're when the young one was older, she started going out with her, her mother. And a couple of times I saw them. More than a couple of times. Um, so I'll tell you about that next time. Okay, thank you.